I wanted to start this video off by saying how dang proud I am of all of you, of all of us, for getting through this year. Apparently, somebody said that it's December 2022. Where the hell did this year go? Uh, I, yeah, I'm just so proud of us because this year has been awful. It's been, it's been bad. Apart from, like, the people in my life keeping me going and some of the stuff that I got to do this year, like seeing Top Gun Maverick in IMAX, uh, this year has been bad. But we're still here. I'm still making videos. We're all still working really hard and trying to be the best people that we can be. And I'm really proud of us for doing that. So well done. Give yourself a pat on the back. Get yourself a nice cozy drink. Because today we're going to be recapping all of my favourite stuff of this year. Not all of it. Some of the stuff that I forgot to make videos about basically. Or didn't get round to. It's the things I forgot video. Um, basically what stuff did I like this year but didn't get to talk about. Let's do it. Oh. Also be warned, you thought my Jurassic World uh, Dominion view was chaotic? I've got no script for this video. All, all I've got is a page in my notes app that has the films that I liked this year. Um, so let's do this, I guess. <laughs> Okay, let's get the big the big film out of the way real quick. And if you'd follow me on Twitter, you absolutely know what this is going to be. I even mocked up a thumbnail for this for a video for this review. Um, however, I never managed to write anything about it. Top Gun Maverick took over my life, my brain, everything I like. It's just is in this film. Top Gun Maverick is so good. I've seen it six times this year. Once in IMAX, once with a double bill with the first film, and the other times in the cinema. Oh my god, it's so good. It's... Yes, it's like, it's the biggest film of this year. It's a huge blockbuster film. However, it doesn't sacrifice... And I'm gonna call Marvel out. It doesn't sacrifice any of its qualities for being this big. It's a blockbuster, but it's a good blockbuster, because a lot of blockbusters aren't that good. However, Top Gun Maverick has an amazing cast with huge chemistry. It has Glenn Powell, who I would like to marry. It's got amazing uh, stunts and amazing cinematography that will make you cry from the first scene. It has an astounding soundtrack that I own on vinyl now. It is incredible. It's so good. And I don't know why I couldn't make a video about it. I just couldn't put what I thought into words. All of my letterbox reviews for this film are just like jokes. Because I can't. It's just so good. And I'm so thankful for Top Gun Maverick being the lights in this year, basically. And I'm so thankful for if, if my friend who was watching this, uh, you know who you are. Thank you for introducing me to this film. Thank you for all the experiences that we had to that. This film is an experience. It lends itself to having an amazing time with friends and introducing people to this film. It's Top Gun Maverick. It's good. Go watch it if you haven't already. <laughs> okay, next up, let's talk about a little film which I haven't seen absolutely anybody talk about, um, which is streaming now on Amazon Prime, which is Catherine Called Birdie, which is directed by, and now I am looking at the letterbox page for this because I don't know who, uh, Lena Dunham. Um, incredible film. I freaking love this film. It is a coming of age drama with some light comedy aspects uh, set in like medieval England. So you've got all those like like the, like the the Bridgerton themes where like you've got to get married, you've got to find a husband, um, but it's it's more uh, more about exploring who you are as a person. Um, puberty and all these things but explored through like med med medieval times it's incredible i never knew i needed this film um it's aesthetic incredible i want to like eat this film because it's so cozy and amazing and the soundtrack so lovely it doesn't do that thing like in bridgerton which i don't like which is where they cover famous songs but make it like cello and orchestral don't like that it's got a lovely original score all the actors are amazing um yeah, just just a just a great film. Go check this one out. It's on Amazon Prime. Please do. I wanna I wanna see you commenting that you've watched Catherine Called Birdie. Okay, next up, and I'm really annoyed I didn't get to make a video for this one. Do Revenge. Do Revenge blew me away and is in like my top five for this year. It's so good. I 2022 was the year that I discovered Stranger Things and also my love for Maya Hawk as a person their whole just now yeah, i want to like talk to them about the creative process of like writing and music and 
acting, they, they're just such an amazing person from, from what I've seen of them and, and interviews of them. Do Venge as a film is incredible. It's it, it may not be winning any like the best film awards for like writing or anything like that, but outfits are incredible. It's queer as hell, which is really lovely to see because Netflix have been doing a lot of like queer shows and just canceling them. However, they put out Do Revenge and it hopefully did really well, but they're not like getting rid of it. So it's nice that something on Netflix that's queer and not scared to show it is staying along with like Heartstoppers and like Young Royals, which I haven't watched yet. Um, Do Revenge is just incredible. Everyone's outfits, again, are amazing. The music's pretty dang good. It's not really what I listen to, but it's still amazing. Um, and everyone else in it, not just Maya Hawk, but everyone, like Camilla Mendez, incredible job. They're quite, they're really funny in this film. Um, and it's just great to have more, more like, films like 10 things i hate about you and scream etc etc with like clicks and stuff it's just really fun it's lovely to see and it's queer again it's just queer and it's amazing i love it okay next up a recent addition to the list enola holmes 2 incredible film bloody loved enola holmes 2 don't have much to say about it however i just loved its whole deal um what i did find out what i do love actually this year narration bloody love it at first like before this year, I was like, I hate, I hate narration, I hate this whole fourth wall breaking, talking to the audience thing. However, when done right, like this, I found it really comforting. I found Millie Bobby Brown turning to the camera and being like, is he looking back? Is, is the boy that I really like looking at me? It's really comforting. I, I really like it. And I found that I actually don't hate narration anymore. Um... And this film came at a really good time where I just needed a fun detective adventure. And like Millie Bobby Brown and Henry Cavill as a duo are great. I like to think that they're going to make more of these films because they really need to. Because they're so good. Um, and I love anything Sherlock Holmes related. Um, yeah. So who knew? Narration. Actually kind of good. Okay, next up. And again, I'm really sad I didn't get to make a video for this. But Crush took my heart early this year it's it went straight to disney plus annoyingly because it would have been amazing to watch this in the cinema it's this amazing teen queer as hell drama where uh the main character is an artist they get pinned uh like they get framed for doing graffiti at school um and they don't want to be framed for doing a crime because they want to get to a fancy art school so they need to find who framed them and it's this amazing like mystery but it like there's love triangles and uh like teen ro romance and all this amazing stuff but it's teen romance but it's gay as hell um but also the main thing about crush here you go listen to this one um is the 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 queerness isn't it's really positive. It's just an accepted thing in, in this world um, that they've written. It's it's as if being queer is normal, which, hot take, I think is true. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it has this amazing aura around it where being queer is normal. Nobody is homophobic in the film, at least to my memory, um, and everyone's really accepting of it, and I love that, and I think more films should be doing that. Um, so yeah, Crush. Definitely go check Crush out. It's amazing. I love it. It's so good. Okay, are you ready for some murder mystery now? And no, not the one you're thinking of. Got Us Onion really did, I really liked it, but it's bottom tier of my top 10 list this year. It didn't, like, I didn't fall in love with it like I did the first one. It's really good, and if you love it, I'm really happy for you, but I didn't love it as much as I loved See How They Run, which is this amazing um, spotlight pictures, which is owned by Disney now, so it's already on Disney+. Plus. Go check it out. It's this amazing 1950s West End murder mystery. Class is all hell. It looks like it was directed by Wes Anderson, which is always a good thing, I guess. Um, starring, I'm really going to butcher their name. I'm really sorry, but uh, Sosha Ro Ronan? Something like that. Um, and Sam Rockwell. They both do an amazing job. Um, and it's so good. Yeah, like cinematography is awesome, um, which is really what, like, they really do a really good job with... Uh, the cinematography which is what i really wish glass onion did because glass onion sort of chucked away its cinematography um where like like the first knives out like beautiful but the second one they sort of prioritized uh like cameos more than anything which is really annoying however i'm talking about see how they run see how they run amazing go go watch it it's on disney plus soundtrack i need to own the soundtrack on vinyl uh when it comes out it better come out 
So finally, for the list of films that I didn't get round to talking about this year, uh, lastly is Fisherman's Friends 2 One and All, which for some of you, you're probably like, what the hell did I just say? So let me let me tell you, this is one of my most anticipated films of this year. So Fisherman's Friends, who are they? They are a shanty uh, folk band from Cornwall, UK. They're amazing. They're one of my favorite bands of all time, and they've had two movies made about them. Um, and they're just amazingly wholesome, cute times. The soundtracks are amazing. Um, and the second one came out this year, and I loved it. I thought it was great. The soundtrack, absolute bangers. Again, vinyl's coming out at the end of this year. I will be buying that. Um, but what to say about Fisherman's Friends 2, apart from that it's just really good. Apart from Fisherman's Friends 2, one and all, being a solidly good time, like, nothing jumps out about it being amazingly shot or amazing acting, apart from I did cry at the end. Um, the thing that I loved about it is the fact that it got made in the first place. Uh, this is a film about shanty music, about a band in Cornwall that got released in UK cinemas and perhaps in the, like, other, other places too. Um, I can't name another country, apparently. Um, I just think it's amazing that my favourite music genre is being given life. It's being given people a chance to see what it's like. To see if they like this music, to get more people into shanties. Um, I love that, and I think that's really important. I think there's more to a film than just the film, um, which is probably the most pretentious thing I've ever said on this channel. Uh, but there you go. Can you tell I'm tired? <laughs> Okay, let's moving on to uh, TV shows. Let's do this. Okay, first of all, um, you weren't you weren't gonna get away with me not talking about Heartstopper for one last time this year. Heartstopper, it's season one because season two is is being made. Um, in fact, it's, it's wrapped filming. But Heartstopper, oh my god, Heart like I did even get to talk about this, but I really wanted to just talk about it again. Heartstopper changed my life. Um, it really did open my eyes to who I am as a person um, and it really just is good <laughs> um, it's shot really well the music is incredibly well picked um, the acting for people who are so young is so good and Alice Oseman is the person who I would like to meet and talk about writing with um, because their brain is just amazing. And Heartstopper truly is the best thing. Probably is one of the best things that I've ever watched this year. And probably ever. Um, it really is good. <laughs> I think you probably have seen it already. However, if you haven't, please do check it out before the second season comes out. Because it's so good. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say about Heartstopper. It's really good. Okay, switching gears from that emotional mess, let's talk about The Bear, because absolutely nobody is talking about The Bear, and it's a freaking amazing show. Uh, the Bear is streaming on Disney+, Plus or like FX, wherever you are, and it follows a guy who's trying to fix his late brother's restaurant. Um, and it's in a bad state, but it's it's so good. This, this show uh, is a different look on the hospitality uh, industry which is what I work in and I really did like find this a cathartic experience because what the bear does is it shows the relationships between uh, colleagues and friends in these environments not only is like the bear is incredibly well shot it's simple but it's good and that's why because it's so simple so you can concentrate on what's going on on screen the color grading as you'll see in all the photos of the show is it it really does put a pin and nails down that really horrible fluorescent kitchen color. But the main thing that the bear does is it really does demonstrate this really how weird the hospitality industry is when it comes to uh, like how everyone is and how everyone's doing, how the hospitality industry is awful for your mental health, um, how it will, it will make you cry all the time. It will make you feel horrible. Um, and it shows this on screen. I've never seen a show or ch a movie to do with um, cooking or kitchens like this. Um, and it has, and it does have this really accurate, amazing thing where one moment you could be having an argument with a friend or a colleague, and the next you could be serving side by side, uh, getting on perfectly fine. Within a span of like five minutes, everything has gone from bad to amazing. Um, and it just nails that. And it's like the only industry or the only thing that I know that can happen 
like that, which is amazing. It's a, it was a really cathartic experience getting to watch this. It's amazing. Please do check out The Bear. Okay, so rounding out my 2022 recap of everything that I didn't get to watch this year um, is The English, which is a quite a recent addition to this list, actually. Um, the English is a mini drama, mini series. It's like 200 and something minutes long, um, starring Emily Blunt and uh, Chaske Spencer. Um, it's this amazing Western, um, which is so beautiful. That's the perfect word to use for this. The music is intense and it really does ingrain in your memory, but so does the visuals and the cinematography. It really doesn't shy away from blood or um like killing people this show is gruesome and brutal but at the same time it's beautiful it's streaming on amazon in the us because it's an amazon show however for some reason it's playing on the bbc iplayer in the uk but it's so good and please do check it out it'll take you like a day to get through i binged it all in one go because i was like i'm watching this um yeah it's so good it really does like open up your eyes to uh, the Western time period. Okay, so that was a 25 minute video of me saying this is good a lot and you should watch this a lot. However, I really do mean it. Um, thank you so much for sticking with us this year. This year has been, again, very tiring, very bad. But next year, I'm hoping to turn things around. I'm hoping to upload on this channel so much more and start live streaming again. And so hopefully start writing again, maybe. That would be lovely, maybe, if I have the energy for that too. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for subscribing and liking and commenting. Have a lovely Christmas. Um, I don't know what you got planned. I don't know how I would know that. However, if you, yeah, just have a lovely time. Watch some of the films maybe I suggested in this video. And I will see you next year. Have a good Christmas. I'll see you later. Bye.